Good day, grade 10. Welcome to week number 8. We are going to finish off a section of equations before we start on our inequalities by looking at simultaneous linear equations. And the best way to do this is to look at several examples. Now, there are several ways that we can solve simultaneous equations. What you need to understand is the reason we look at simultaneous equations is because they are made up of two equations with two unknowns two equations with two unknowns. So that means we need to try and make a plan to solve this. So there are a couple of ways to do it and I'm going to show you one of the most basic ways for this. So if you overlook, look over here, you can see what x plus y equals 10 and x minus y equals 2. So I'm going to call this equation 1 and this equation too. And the reason I'm doing that is just that we can start working with how, with numbers. We're going to start naming our equations so that we can actually make sure that we know where we're going when we work our steps. So there's a little trick here and the trick here is that we can see that this is positive and this is positive, but this is positive and this is negative. So if I added equation 1 to equation 2. If I went 2 plus 1, what would happen? Let's have a look. x plus x gives us 2x plus y plus a minus y. The y's go away. And what are we left with? 10 plus 2 which is 12. Therefore, x is equal to 6. And you must remember that when we are doing simultaneous equations, we can't just end off with looking at just for the one variable. We need to go and find the other variable. Now, the cool thing with this is now we can either substitute this x equals 6 into the first equation or the second equation. It really doesn't make a difference. So let's just substitute this, substitute in equation 1. So what would that be? That would be 6 plus y equals 10. Therefore, y is equal to 10 minus 6, and therefore the answer is 4. So therefore, we'd say the answer then is going to be 6, 4. And the reason I write it like this is because usually what you're doing when you're solving two simultaneous equations is you're actually trying to find a point on the coordinate plane where these two lines meet. But you don't really need to know that right now. You just need to know that it is normal practice that we group these in a bracket of 6 and 4. Let's look at another equation, something that's slightly more complicated. OK, so here you've got p plus 2q equals 1 and 3p minus q equals 10. So we see that if we add these, it's going to be 4p and you're still going to be left with a q. And if we subtract them, the same thing's going to happen. We're going to be left with p's and q's. So we can't do that. So there are a couple of ways that we can do this. I'm going to show you two different methods. The f and then you can decide which method you prefer. The first method is I can take equation 1 and I can make p the subject of the formula. In other words, I can put p by itself and solve for it. So if I do that, I can go p is equal to 1 minus 2q. 1 minus 2q. Right, now that I've got p is equal to 1 minus 2q, what I could do is I could substitute this value into equation 2. What that means is that wherever I see a p, I'm going to write 1 minus 2q. So let's do that. That would be 3 times 1 minus 2q minus q equals 10. And then we multiply it out. So we get 3 minus 6q minus q equals 10. Add the like terms and take everything that's not a q onto the other side. So we've got minus 7q is equal to 10 minus 3. So we've got minus 7q is equal to 7, so q is equal to minus 1. And then you can either substitute this, because obviously now we need to get p, either substitute this into either of these two, but what I tend to do is go and substitute it back into that dude over there. So I'll get p is equal to 1 minus 2 times minus 1, which becomes 1 plus 2, which equals 3. Therefore, my point is, if I want to do it as PQ, P would be 3 and then Q would be minus 1. Now, that is one way to do this. There is another way to do it. So, I'm going to erase this because you guys are going to have it on a video. So, you will be able to look at it again. 
and I'm going to show you another way. The other way of doing it is realizing that we need to get rid of one of these variables. So in order to do that, we could either take equation 1 and multiply it by 3, and then we'd have 3 p plus 6q plus 3, and then we could subtract that. Or we could follow on with what we did last time, and we would add them, but then we have to add the when we have to add them, we want to add and get rid of the ones with the opposite signs, which means we're going to take this and we're going to multiply this whole thing by two to get rid of the twos. It really doesn't matter which way you do it. So I'm going to basically decide to get rid of my cues. So I'm going to take equation two and I'm going to times it by two. So when I do that, when equation 2 and I times that by 2, actually I shouldn't write it on that side, it's going to get confusing for you guys. Um, I'll show you why now. So let's go back to that. Okay, I'm going to take equation 2 and I'm going to times it by 2. So we end up with 2 times 3, which is 6p, minus 2q is equal to 20. And the reason I said it was confusing to put that on that side is because of the fact that I actually want to now call this equation 3. Equation 3. So now do you see that we've got p plus 2q equals 1 and 6 minus 2q equals 20. To make it easier for you to see, I'm going to write it over here. I've got p plus 2q equals 1. That is equation 1. And now the manipulated equation 2, which has become equation 3, says 6p minus 2q is equal to 20. And that's now equation 3. So now do you see that what we could do is we could just add equation 3 plus 1. So if we did that, we'd end up with p plus 6p is 7p plus 2q minus 2q, there it goes away, it's 0, and it equals 21. Therefore, p equals 21 over 7, which equals 3. Nice and easy, and it's very good because that's exactly what the last got the last method. And now we can substitute it into either equation 1 or equation 2. I tend to go for the ones that it was the smaller coefficient, and that was the smaller numbers in front, but it really doesn't matter which way you go. So let's do, I don't know, let's go into equation 1. So we're going to substitute sub into equation 1. So we're going to go 3 plus 2q is equal to 1. Therefore, 2q is equal to 1 minus 3. So 2q equals minus 2. Therefore, q is equal to minus 1. And therefore, our point of pq is again 3 minus 1. Now, grade tens, it really doesn't matter which way you do it. It really doesn't. Um, as you must use the one that is most comfortable for you and which one that you always use to get right. Okay, let's try another example. Okay, so this time, this time, you will see we've got 2x plus 3y equals 8 and 3x plus 4y equals 11. Now, the method I used last time, yeah, Okay, I multiplied it out, okay, which we are going to do again. The reason for that is the reason I'm not solving for either x or y is, let's just have a look. If I solve this for x, I get 2x is equal to 8 minus 3y, and then I've got x equals 8 minus 3y over 2. And then what would I have to do? I would have to substitute that into that. And who likes working with fractions? No one. So that method is not very cool. In fact, that method we only generally use if we've got common factors throughout, which means this will go away, or if we have a coefficient of 1. So let's try a different method. OK, let me just go back to the, there we go. So now let's look at another method. Let's look at the method we've just used. Let's say we decide we want to get rid of the x's, the x's. Okay, that's what we want to get rid of. So if we want to get rid of the x's, do you see you've got 2x plus 3y equals 8 and 3x plus 4y equals 11. Now the only way we can have this happen, if this is equation 1 and this is equation 2, is if we multiply equation 1 
by 3, then we'd have 6x plus blah, 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 blah. And if we looked at multiply equation 2 with 2, then we'd have 6x plus um, 8y plus blah, blah, blah. So let's do that. We're trying to get rid of the x's. So to get rid of the x's, they have to be equal. So we're going to multiply the first equation by 3. And then we're going to multiply the second equation by 2. So let's do that. So 2x times 3 becomes 6x plus 3 times 3 is 9y is equal to 8 times 3 which is 24. And we'll now call this equation 3. Now let's look at question, I mean equation 2. Yeah, we've got 3x times by 2 which is now 6x, how nice. Plus 4 times 2 is 8, so it becomes plus 8y is equal to 11 times 2, which is 22, which is now equation 4. Now we want to get rid of the x's, but do you see that this is 6x and this is 6x? So we could actually go equation 4 minus equation 3 to get rid of our 6x's. In fact, sorry, my bad, it's going to be equation 3 minus equation 4 top minus bottom. So 6 minus 6 is 0, 9 minus 8 is a y is equal to 24 minus 22 which is just 2. Ta-da! See, not so difficult. But we haven't finished. We now need to find our x. So again, I'm just going to sub in to equation 1. It really doesn't matter which one you sub into. So we got 2x is equal to, I'm oh sorry, plus 3 times 2 equals 8. So we've got 2x equals 8 minus 6. So 2x is equal to 2 and therefore x is equal to 1. And therefore our points are going to be 1, 2. Okay, not too difficult, hey? Right, let's look at another example. Okay, now, first of all, I do not want you to freak if you see a fraction. I know it's a natural tendency, but do you see that we can actually do something quite nice here? We've got x plus 2y equals 1, and x over 3 plus y over 2 equals 1. Okay, now, first of all, don't panic about that. Let's see if we can make one of these to the subject of the formula, and we can because the coefficient of x is 1. So therefore we can solve for x and go x is equal to 1 minus 2y. Okay, so that's quite nice. Now let's look at this and let's see if we can get rid of this. Do you see that this is a 3 and this is a 2? And if I wanted to, I could make a common denominator of 6. So 6, 3 goes into 6 twice, 2 times x is 2x plus 2 goes into 6 3 times, 3 times y is 3y is equal to 1. Now to get rid of this denominator, what do we do? Times both sides by 6 over 1. So it goes cancel, cancel, how awesome is that? And now we've got 2x plus 3y is equal to 6. And now it looks really easy and it looks exactly like that question that we did right at the beginning. We were just going to take this and substitute it into that. So steps for this one are, and I'll carry on with this in a minute, but steps for this are, obviously we need to try and make one of these a subject of the formula. Or if you can't, then what we do is immediately get rid of the denominator. By doing that we might find a common denominator which in this case was 6 and then you multiply through to get rid of that denominator and then you have two equations that we can use and then you can either do the simultaneous cancelling what we've done before and you or you can do the substitution method which is what I'm about to do. So we've got 2 times 1 minus 2y plus 3y is equal to 6. So you've got 2 minus 4y plus 3y is equal to 6 and then that becomes 2 minus y is equal to 6 and being very slow about this and minus y is equal to 4 so y is equal to minus 4 and then I can substitute that straight back into there and get x is equal to 1 minus 2 times minus 4 which equals 9 so therefore the point would be 9 
minus 4. Right, let's do another example now. Right, now if we look at this question, we can see that it looks a little bit scary, but it's actually a build on from the previous question. You can see that we've got x minus x plus y over 2 is equal to 7 minus 2x minus y over 3. x minus y over 4 minus x plus y over 3 plus 4.5 equals 0. So what we really need to do is we need to simplify both of these equations first before we can actually start doing simultaneous equations. So let's do that. Let's look at what I'm going to call, obviously, equation 1. So we've got x plus y over 2, and I'm going to bring everything to one side, minus 7, plus 2x minus y over 3 equals 0. Okay, now do you realize that, as you can see, just like last time, we've got 2, 1, and 3. Our common denominator is going to be 6, right? So 2 goes into 6 3 times. So you've got 3 times x plus y minus 1 goes into 6 6 times. So we've got 6 times 7, which is 42, plus 6, 3 goes into 6 twice. So we've got 2 times 2x minus y equals naught. Now the nice thing is because this is zero, when we multiply both sides by six, you just get rid of the six and that stays a zero. And then we can just multiply out the numerator. So we've got 3x plus 3y minus 42 plus 4x minus 2y equals naught. And now we just group. So 3x plus 4x is 7x, plus 3y minus 2y is just a plus y, and the take it to the other side is 42, and that uh, is equation 2. So now we've got 7x plus y equals 42 is our first equation. Now we need to rearrange this equation. So let's write it up here. We've got, in fact, I'm going to change pen colors just so that we don't get confused about what we're working with. What color should we use? Should we use lilac -y purple thing? Yes, let's do that. So you've got x minus y over 4 minus x plus y over 3. And what we need to do is convert this into a fraction, a proper fraction. So you go 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9. So it becomes plus 9 over 2 equals 0. So if we look at this, we can see the common denominator for this. Well, the easy way to do it is go 4 times 3 is 12. Does 2 go into 12? Yes, it does. Yay! So our common denominator is 12, and that equals 0. So then we do exactly the same process as always. 4 goes into 12 three times. So you've got 3 times x minus y minus 3 goes into 12 how many times? 4, so we've got 4 times bracket, x plus y, and then plus 2 goes into 12, 6 times, 6 times 9 is 54. And just like last time, if you times both sides by 12 over 1 to get rid of the denominator, you'll find that 12 times 0 is just 0, so we end up with 0. So if we carry on with this, we've now got 3x minus 3y minus 4x, because the minus 4 times x is minus 4x, minus times a plus is a minus, so again, again, I've got minus 4y plus 54. So then we just add the like terms, so we've got 3x minus 4x is minus x, minus 3y minus 4y is minus 7y is equal to minus 54, and to get rid of all those minuses, we just divide. So we've got x plus 7y is equal to 54. And that there would be equation 2. So do you see that here we've got 7x plus y equals 42, and x plus 7y equals 54? It really doesn't matter which way we do it. Um, okay, let me bring the blue down again now. So if I bring this down, we've got 7x plus y is equal to 42. Sorry, that was equation 3 there. So now we've got equation 3 and equation 2. Now, what could we do? One way that we could do this is we could multiply this by 7 and then we'd get rid of the x's, or we could multiply this by 7 and get rid of the y's, 
or we could solve for x or y. I really don't mind which way you want to do it. So why don't we, since last time we used the substitution method, this time we multiply. So I'm going to say let's take equation 2 and multiply it by 7. So if we do that, we'll end up with um, 7 times 7 is 49, so we've got 49x plus 7y is equal to 7 times 2 is 14, carry 1, 7 4 is 28, 29, 294. And that now is equation 4. I'm going to bring equation 3 down, so we've got x plus 7y is equal to 54 and that was equation 3 and now you can see that because the y's are the same we can actually subtract we can go equation 4 minus equation 3 which is what we've done all along so you've got 49 minus x is going to be 48x those cancel and then you've got 294 minus 54 so if we work that out 4 minus 4 is 0 9 minus 5 is 4, and that's 240. So then you end up with 240 divided by 48, and if you shove that in the calculator, you get that x, which I'm sure you all will do, you will get that x is equal to 5. Have we finished? No, we have not. We now need to substitute and find the y value. And we can do this anywhere. I personally am going to do it into equation 2. 2, really doesn't matter what you're doing because you're going to be using your calculator anyway. So you've got 7 times 5 plus y equals 42. So that's 35 plus y equals 42. Therefore, y is equal to 7. So therefore, our solution then would be 5, 7. So grade 10's you need to understand that in order to solve simultaneous equations, we need to get some of the x's. We either need to solve for an x that has a coefficient of 1 or solve for y, which has a coefficient of 1, and then substitute it in. Or we need to be make sure that one variable in each of the equations is equal so we can cancel them. And don't be scared when you have horrible things looking like this. Just get rid of those denominators and then treat it as normal. Please grade 10, go practice, practice, practice. And then once you're finished, you go do the assessment at the end of the section. Thank you, grade 10. Have a lovely day.